これ。The name Corn derives from his dark tongue name, Carneth, meaning Lord of Rage, or Lord of Blood. Although Corn despises the use of magic and accordingly hates Zinch, Slanesh is his opposite. Corn and Slanesh personify two entirely opposing aspects of chaos, and Corn considers Slanesh. A weakling without martial pride or honor. Images of Corn show it to be a mighty being, sitting upon a great throne of brass atop a mountainous pile of bleached skulls, centered in a lake of blood. The skulls are of all those slain by Corn's champions, and of all his slain champions. The mountain slowly grows ever higher. Corn is said to have inherited a martial nobility and honor, and considers the weak and helpless to be unworthy of his wrath. His associated number is eight, reflected in the organization of his armies, and in smaller matters such as the number of syllables in a demonic follower's name. The fortress of Corn is Corn's realm within the warp. It is a monument to fury and bloodshed, and is built upon foundations of murder and conflict. This blood-soaked realm echoes constantly with Corn's bellows and the clash of weapons. At the center of this mighty fortress lies the brass citadel, where Corn's mighty throne resides. He sits atop a mountain of skulls, those slain in his name. A great fire pit lights Corn's gloomy chamber. The dark flames consume the souls of cowards who have fled from battle. Inside the fortress lays the foundries of Corn, manned by souls of warriors who died in their sleep, and thus forever shamed by the blood god. Around the citadel flows a moat and is filled not with water, but with the boiling blood of those who have lost their lives to war. Beyond this moat lies league upon league of cracked land, littered with the ravaged bones of those fallen in battle. A mighty crevasse splits the wasteland in two. A canyon many miles long and bottomless. The fortress is also said to contain pens of juggernauts and a complex of battlements equipped with great infernal cannons. It is said that Corn himself was once consumed by such rage that he took up his sword and smote the ground, splitting it asunder for eternity. This fell sword is known by many names, including War Maker and the End of All Things, and is capable of laying waste to worlds with a single blow. The code of Corn is simple: blood and more blood. His only temple is the battlefield. His sole sacrament, the blood of nations. Consciously or not, all warrior cultures pay him homage with their acts of murder and destruction, from the head-hunting tribes of backwater, feral worlds to the planet-conquering war bands of the world eaters. It is no accident that war has spread from one side of the Imperium to the other, for over the eons, Corn has ensured. That genocidal fury has coursed across the stars. The galaxy knows no peace, and Corn has grown powerful indeed. Uncounted worlds resound with the clamor of battle. Every scream and death rattle a small devotion to his glory. With each new dawn, Ikor 
mingles with blood on a million battlefronts, each massacre and cataclysm fresh meat for the Lord of Battle's table. Eldar and human, demon and orc, Tyranid and Tau, all are gore-splattered playthings dancing for Korn's personal gratification. None embody this unsettling truth more than the hordes of greenskins that fight within sight of the fortress of Korn. The original orc invaders attracted the gaze of the blood god when they plunged headlong into the Eye of Terror in search of fresh carnage. Their dangerously unhinged warlord, the self-styled demon Killa, had already made his mark upon the Eye by bringing battle to several half-real planets devoted to Korn's rivals. The orc warlord proved unstoppable until his Wa crash-landed on a fresh planet belonging to a mighty demon prince high in the standing of Korn. The war boss's vast horde was eventually slain to an orc by the wrathful demon prince and his minions. But his joy in the murderous spectacle was such that Korn himself ensured the green-skin crusade rose once more the very next dawn. History repeated itself over and over again as the orcs fought tooth and nail, never once showing signs of surrender or despair. The blood god was so impressed by their limitless battle lust that he took the orcs into his own domain. In the shadow of the brass citadel, his elite bloodletter generals battle against the demon killer's undying horde on a daily basis. Each cycle, great clouds of fungal spores are released by the dying greenskins to take root and flourish in the blood-stained foothills of the osseous peaks. Yet more orcs are born, grow to maturity, and charge into battle once more. Such endless cycles of bloodshed are most pleasing to the blood god. After all, the one true constant in the galaxy is that of endless war. Korn himself has made sure of it. <laughs>